All right, so you've already gone through our HTML and our CSS, you've done a little bit of jQuery, and you finally made it to the top of the hill with JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is the muscle, right? With HTML being the bone, CSS being the skin, HTML is the muscle, it's all the cool functional stuff. It's what lets you do all of these amazing things. But there is a vast difference between how you learn JavaScript in order to use it and how you learn HTML in order to use it. So with HTML and CSS, right, we would basically come here, create our index.html document. You kind of memorize these HTML tags, the head tag, the body tag. Uh, you don't have to memorize a whole lot of tags because it's really easy to Google them, right? Just like, you know, you Google like W3 schools, you know, create a uh, title, right? And H1 or H2 tag will pop up. With JavaScript, it's a bit different. There's a lot more to learn off the bat before you can really build anything cool. So what you have to do is, when you're actually learning JavaScript, is when you learn a concept, don't just breeze through it like we normally would with HTML and CSS because it's so easy to Google later. It's not that easy to Google JavaScript concepts when you first get started. So what you want to do is learn the concept, code it up, and keep practicing it until you can teach it to somebody else. That's really how good you want to get at it. There's a bunch of core concepts that we're going to be going over um, in the next few weeks of videos, basically. So make sure that you understand how all these work. And our style is going to be uh, kind of similar, a little bit different, though. We're going to actually be building really cool projects along the way as well. So every time we learn new concepts, go through these projects, we're actually going to be building really cool things at the end of each one of these videos to show you how you can actually use these new concepts to build some awesome program, whether that is like a comment section of a website or a login system or something like that. We're going to make sure that everything we teach you is useful. You'll be able to actually use it on the job. These are not just going to be random kind of stylings like we did with HTML and CSS to get you used to the tools. This is going to be very specific focus type of learning for JavaScript so you know what tools you can use, memorize them, and then know how to use them in the future without somebody having to show you. Because that's kind of the crazy thing with JavaScript, is that even though you have all these amazing things you can build and the possibilities are really quite endless, everybody builds it a little bit differently. And you'll see that when you show your classmates all your different projects and things like that. Everybody builds it wildly differently. All right, but enough on that JavaScript stuff. I just want to show you what all this stuff is and just jump right into it. So let's just get right into this. First thing we need to do is attach a script tag to our body. Important little note here, make sure that your script tag is at the very bottom of your page. We want it to be right before the closing body tag so that it loads last. So first things we're going to do is we're just going to test out and make sure JavaScript is working. So there's three different things we're going to use. The first one is console.log. do hello world. Oh, by the way, it's also a good uh, habit to comment out what you're writing. So we're going to do print hello world to the console. The reason is you want to save this. Because as you go through, you want to make sure that you understand these concepts. You want to go back over and over again and make sure you're really getting it. So save these files. Save your week 7 files. Save your week 8 files. Go back if you have to. But try to do these exercises on your own as well without looking. By the way, JavaScript commenting, just two forward slashes. Although, you should know also, if you want to comment everything out, we just go like that. So we would use a forward slash followed by an asterisk and then asterisk followed by a forward slash. But for these comments, we'll just do two forward slashes. All right, so I have my console.log. Let's go ahead and see what this did. I'm going to refresh the page. All right, nothing happened. Nothing changed on the page. That's okay. We're going to inspect the element. For those of you who remember, whenever we looked at the console, especially for jQuery, console is also extremely useful for JavaScript as well. So here we have hello world being printed to the console. Take a note of this period right here, because JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language, and actually the dot log is referencing the console. 
because console has a specific function called log, which lets you print to it, as long as you do console.log. There's another one similar to that, which is document.write, and we're just going to save this. Let's go ahead and refresh. Well, if this happens, your debugger is currently on. This is actually a really useful tool. Not for right now, though. We actually really need to turn this off. So let's go ahead and just turn this off. And there we see Hello World right at the top of the screen. You'll notice when I refreshed, it also printed it again. So the console will print whatever is in your JavaScript every time you refresh and show what you had previously as well. So the document here in this case, the document is actually this entire page. And dot write is the function that lets you write to that page. So let's go ahead and write print hello world to the web page. AKA the document. And the last one is alert. Save this, and let's go see what this does. So we have our hello world, we have our hello world up here. We refresh, debugger is still on. And there is our hello world popping up. All right, so if your debugger keeps going on and off, it's because of this little icon right here. Make sure that it's blue so that you refresh. It doesn't happen. If you make it gray and cross it out, it'll debug every time. So make sure you have that checked off for now. Um, it's actually a really useful tool. Play around with it a little bit. Um, it just kind of helps you debug your code. We're going to be using the console, though, for the most part going forwards, uh, just to walk you through this. So what the alert does is it prints a message in a pop-up box. Now, these are not the best ways to go about printing content for your users. However, uh, we will be using these quite a bit because it's a really great way to test. Um, it's a really great way to just kind of get the ball rolling with whatever program you're going to be using. Um, we're actually going to be covering the best way to go about uh, displaying content on your screen in the next week's videos. But for now, we're going to be using these. You're going to see these quite a lot, particularly console.log and alert. You're going to see them all the time. Console.log is primarily used for debugging because it shows up in the console and you can actually access the file through the console, which is really useful also. So what I want you to do now is write your own console.log, document.write, and alert. Almost treat this just like you're a little kid in school, go through and do it like five times or 10 times for each of them. Change up the sentence, change a few things until you really get a good feel for this. So go ahead and just go and do that, do that assignment so these really start to sink in.